Friends, today uh, is Friday, August 14th, 2020, and we have a devotional that we are offering up to uh, the members and friends of Valley Presbyterian Church scattered across this digital world. We're continuing to study the prophet Isaiah. The verses I'm going to be reading for you are from Isaiah 58, verses 9b and 10. Let's listen for God's word to us today. If you remove the yoke from, the, from, from you, the pointing of the finger and the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. It's the word of the Lord. Well, uh, today I wanted to just uh, take a moment to do what you might call a theological proviso, a little uh, aside that, that can be an important thing, a point of clarification. Because we've been talking this week about the connection between our lives and our worship and the fact that it's important for our, uh, our lives not to run counter to our worship values. If we're worshiping a God who is just and honoring him uh, because he is a God who is righteous, then our lives should reflect that value of righteousness. There's one mistake we can make in that way, and that is um, to conclude from that need for an integral connection between life and worship that somehow it's our lives that make our worship valuable. And uh, that can lead down a pathway in which um, we, we make the mistake of thinking that um, our purity is at the heart of our worship. And uh, that, that was discussed in the church in a famous historical controversy called the Controversy of the Donatists. So here's a little bit of uh, theological and church history for you. But uh, the emperor Diocletian persecuted the Christian church. He was a Roman emperor, emperor who wanted to uh, restore Roman paganism. And so he uh, initiated a very, very difficult period of time in which uh, Christians were, were jailed and executed. And there were some bishops in um, Carthage who under the pressure of uh, martyrdom recanted, uh, they were called the Traditores, and then um, when Diocletian's uh, purge, his uh, reign of terror was over, they went back and reclaimed their beliefs. The Donatists were a group of people who thought that if you had once recanted your faith, uh, you, your, your ministry was improper, and anyone that had taken communion or participated under the authority of bishops who had not been willing to be martyred, um, their uh, life in the church was invalid. And so this became an attack on um, the validity of the ministry of those who had uh, been unwilling to uh, confess their faith, faith to the point of death. So this brought down into a broader dispute about what, what constituted um, a genuine practice of the sacraments. And eventually, the great theologian Augustine got involved. Um, he also was a bishop in Carthage, and he um, wrote a book called Against the Donatists, in which he made the argument that, um, that stated that the efficacy of the sacraments did not depend on the purity of those who were administrating them, but rather depended ultimately on uh, the mercy and grace and goodness of God. And so um, Augustine was a, a great theologian of mercy and grace, and he was keeping in the forefront of the church's mind the idea that ultimately it, our uh, capacity to worship, participate in the life of God doesn't depend ultimately on the purity of our own lives, but rather on God's willingness to embrace us and to, um, to accept us. And that's an important distinction, and I put it this way in our, the written form of our daily devotional. Our purity cannot make our worship genuine, but our complicity in outright evil can make it false. That's the distinction. Our purity cannot make our worship genuine. So the, purity, our, our, the, 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 the real quality of our worship doesn't depend on our purity, but our complicity in outright evil of the kind that uh, was described in the earlier verses we looked at from Isaiah 58, such as um, the pointing of the finger, being untruthful in speech, uh, beating up on the poor, not taking care of those who are in need, that kind of outright 
uh, complicity in evil can invalidate the worship that we would be doing. Um, St. Augustine argued that it was not the purity of priests that made sacraments efficacious, but the gracious decision of God to embrace his penitent worshipers, imperfect but penitent worshipers, with his mercy. The mark of true penitence is recognizing the error of your ways uh, and, and being determined not to live in ways that contradict God's goodness. So thank you for being with us today. This was a little bit of a heavier theological topic. And uh, if you are ever wanting to look up the story of controversies in the church, there's a wonderful quick reference that comes out of Oxford University. It's called the Oxford Dictionary of the Christian Church. And there you can read in more detail about the story of uh, Donatism. Let's take a moment and pray. Heavenly Father, in, in all of our thinking about life, with you about our attitude to worship and to prayer to fellowship and to church communion help us always to keep your grace and mercy and goodness in mind help us to be able to emphasize the great truth that there is a gap between our being and our doing and your being and your doing that uh, we can never bridge and that ultimately this relationship really depends on your determination to be merciful and to allow the mercy that you've shown us in Christ to be applied to our lives and to our accounts in such a way that we can approach you and that we can serve you. We thank you for that great mercy and we thank you for those like St. Augustine who, uh, who fought for that distinction. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Hallelujah and amen. Thanks for being with us today.